Okay, guys, uh, several of you are asking the question about periods, all right? So the period is the width, all right, from beginning to end, the width of the function, of one repetition of the function, okay? So uh, if you look at the, the graph that I'm providing, um, a period has four parts, all right? I'm going to start over here at over here on the left, and the point, it's approximately the point negative 11, comma 3, probably 3.3, .3, all right? If I start a period there, if I start at that point and I move to the right and I reach the maximum, that is one-fourth of a period. If I go back down to reach the midline, that is two-fourths of the period. Then if I go down to the, to the minimum, that's three-quarters of the period. And if I go all the way back to the midline, that completes one period. Think of it kind of like a uh, sideways Z, all right? So that's a period that basically has four parts, all right? Starting again from midline to peak, from peak back to midline, from midline to the bottom peak, and from the minimum back to the midline. So four parts. So you're given these clues. The clue that you're given is it gives you the point at the maximum and the point at the midline. All right. So what you need to know is that that is one fourth of the length of the period. OK. Now, again, when you think period, you don't want to think the length of the, the function. You want to think the width of the function. So you're only looking at X values, only looking at X values. So if we go from negative two pi to negative one half pi, that's a difference of three pi over two. All right. You can think of the unit circle or you can use subtraction. All right. That's besides the point. From pi over 2 to 2 pi, there's a difference of 3 pi over 2, all right? So if this, if this horizontal distance is 3 pi over 2, then the period will be 4 times that amount. So 4 times 3 pi over 2 is 12 pi over 2, and 12 pi over 2 is equal to 6 pi, all right? Looking at another example, um, this one has just uh, decimals, all right? Now, this x value is 1.5. This x value is 4.75. So those values are, uh, what, three units, 3.25 units apart, all right? So 1.5 to 4.5 is three units, 3.25 units apart. So you have to think, how much of the period is this? So you went from a maximum to the midline and then to a minimum. That is two out of four parts of the period, all right? So it really helps for you to be able to um, get, think of the periods in four parts, in four quarters. So if two out of four parts have a width of 3.25, then to find the length of the period, all you have to do is double it. So one period will have a length of 6.5, all right? That'll be the length. Now, one other thing that helps you see this, this function actually, the midline here at one. So your first, your y-intercept is zero, one. If you follow my cursor, I'm gonna trace the period. There's half the period, three quarters, and here's the full period. The full period ends right here at 6.5 comma one. So you're back where, you're be where you began. So that tells you that that period is 6.5 units wide, all right? So hopefully that helps. Not sure how much time we have left on the video. Um, Here's another one, all right? My uh, X coordinate right here is negative 4.7, and here it's uh, positive 4.7. So put together, that is, uh, those are 9.4 units apart. That's one quarter of the period. So you would just have to multiply, um, multiply 9.4 by four, and that gives you the length of one period. Again, a period is a length. How long is it from point A all the way to point B, all right? That is a uh, period. Hope that this uh, helps, guys.